This video was brought to you by Stolenberg, a bedroom planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Beal. Yo, what's up? I'm now sitting in MG4. This is the 51 kilowatt hour LFP battery. And as you can see, the steering wheel is on the right side with the wrong side, should be the left side with the right side. And we are in Thailand. This is actually in Changdao. And today we have, they call it Gat Nat, which is um, a market. Yeah, uh, in Changdao, it's a small town, but uh, they, they have lots of, I'd call it events. Uh, there's some kind of market here and there time time uh, but okay uh, not, uh, not too interesting about that what you want to uh, see is about this car so um, you probably heard a little bit of noise uh, my mom is actually sitting right behind me here she's riding with me uh, to uh, Chiang Mai uh, but right now she has to sit in the back because because of the setup but eventually when I'm done filming here then uh, she can sit in the front so um, yeah uh, in this video I will talk about the driving impression and summary of this car after spending around five days with it. So I still have to do, I have to still have to drive from here to Bangkok tonight. And also, yeah, I will do Sunday driving. So uh, where, where should I start? Hmm. Uh, yeah, let's start with the software. So the software here is very buggy. Many, many things like screen brightness. When you have it on uh, the lower setting, and then when you pull down here, you see that, okay, it seems to be on the lower setting, but every time you start driving the car, it will then reset to something that is not the lower setting. So, and at night, I feel like, hey, this is too bright. And then what I do is that I adjust it a little bit up and then a little bit down, and that it becomes a lot darker. <laughs> and that's one thing. What does is it? Yeah, the screen tends to freeze from time to time and then it, it's just unresponsive I can't touch anything I mean I can't touch but it, it won't respond then I have to press and hold the home button to reset the infotainment and then it's up and running again and then I'm not sure if it's something to do with the uh, prof oh shit my freaking truck man he did not look at his blind spot before he just entered the road like that yeah you have to be really careful in Thailand when you drive uh, but okay what else is it what's wrong with this car uh, when uh, when you uh, start driving every time you start driving you will hear if I use uh, adaptive cruise control let me see yeah it's kind of hard to use it right now since uh, we are in the town but um, yeah then it also tends to break in some it, it doesn't go that smooth it breaks not very hard but it, it, you can you kind of kind of feel it. it's not the smooth braking uh, for traffic here and there and many times it it doesn't have to brake, so you can see it's actually phantom braking, yeah. But it's like gentler than the Tesla phantom braking. So every time you start driving, it will. Yeah, I think we have to wait until we are on the on the uh, bigger roads. But um, it will always reset this one. The, the lane assist comes on every time, and then also, yeah, now it brakes hard again. Uh, Mom is probably getting a little bit uh, uh, car sick already, but. 
And also, not only that, but there is some kind of ding dong. I should demonstrate actually once we get on the on the bigger road. The ding dong also resets every time, and then you have to go into the menu, and then disable all those things, and then you get at least a little bit less uh, bing bing every time. And what else is it? Uh, yeah, when it comes to auto steer, also, uh, the, it's not that great. I mean, it, it works. It tries to stay within the lane, but if there is a U-turn, typically when you have a U-turn pocket and then the road markings are a little bit unclear, then the car, yeah, okay, now, now it's not, yeah. That, this is the beeping I'm talking about. It was just, <laughs> it, it claims that I'm, I don't know, it, it claims that we are on the bad, yeah, and now it, it's doing some weird uh, uneven driving here. Uh, the, I'm actually, I actually have to fight against the steering wheel. I can feel that the steering wheel is, pull, the steering wheel is pulling me in weird directions now, and I kind of need to just fight, fight against it, because I don't want to drive uh, uh, ping pong all over the place. But yeah, I yeah, typically here, I can show you that uh, if we enable cruise control, and we let the auto stay work, yeah, it, it, I don't know if you can see it, but it, it has a little bit jerky movement. Even though we enable everything, we enable the, the, the TGA, it's called, and uh, the, the lane assist. Uh, it's beeping at you, and it's, it's driving kind of uneven. Not that smooth. Uh, it could have been a lot smoother because the road is very smooth, and the road is not too twisty. Uh, but I was, I was going to tell you that when you have those U-turn spots, and if the slot uh, or if the road markings are a little bit unclear, then the car tends to pull hard towards the right. Uh, we can see here if it happens or not. Okay, I will not touch the steering wheel. Yeah, this one seems to be a little bit unclear. Let's see now what happens. Okay, you know, it's a demo effect. Every time I want to demonstrate something, it does it perfectly. <laughs> but it tends to pull hard. It, uh, I'd say that when I'm driving with the, the the auto steer, uh, it feels kind of unsafe. Like, like here, see, it's about to crash into the barrier. Why is it not uh, doing a correct course? So, and also when we come to a little bit twistier curves, it tends to slow down a lot in the curves, like a Toyota driver. So, uh, it, it, in summary, you know, the the auto steer system, the 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 semi-autonomous systems here, they are super annoying, really. They're super annoying, and those beeps. So, unsteady driving warning also uh, re-enables. I have to disable this, but yes, I have to confirm also. While driving, I have to confirm that. Okay, what else is it that, uh, let me show you here. Okay, slow down a little bit. We come to a curve. Uh, okay, this is way too fast. I'm going to take over. But, yeah. Uh, let me see. And then I will, re-enable this one okay let's re-enable uh, cruise control for now and then while driving i'm trying to disable a bunch of stuff here uh like like the here uh le you, you can see you can kind of feel it lane assist i disable it it's just doing this <laughs> holy macaroni is oh it's bad uh, it's slowing down. It's, it's doing a jerky movement on the steering wheel. So you just want to disable disable all the, the auto steer features and only have uh, adaptive cruise control enabled. But even that one will intervene and do some weird shit. Well, let me see, where is the beep? Uh, yeah, I, I think I already disabled the beep. But also the screen here, they have designed it to be really hard to operate. Because I, I don't know if it's just me, but when I use other, m most other uh, cars with touchscreen, like like Tesla or Polestar even, they have big buttons and they designed the UI to be easy to operate when you are driving the car. Here, if you want to change uh, the temperature here in the HVAC, I can do this and then I can, yeah, if I, if I, if I don't click directly on the plus or the minus, if I misclick a little bit, I will then enter the HVAC menu. And then in order to change temperature, then the, then the temperature is on a different place. I need a tiny button here to change temperature. And if I misclick, then nothing happens. And I have to aim there, there. Okay, and now this one comes and then I can slide it. At least that's good. But uh, speaking of bugs, by the way, 
if you press the right steering wheel button here, you will bring up this this uh, uh, this, this little pop-up, which is kind of like hot hot uh, uh, hot screen for uh, HVAC settings. Like, oh, great! Yeah, now let's change the temperature. Well, it doesn't change. It doesn't react. What about the fan speed? It doesn't react. So this screen here is kind of useless. And then, well, okay, let me just click somewhere else then. Well, the screen is still up until you click on the steering wheel to get it <laughs> out again. So, oh, I mean, this car has so many bugs <laughs> and, uh, and the user interface. Okay, I mean, it's, it's okay. I mean, you have lots of information here, but it, it's, it's sometimes hard to use. And speaking of more bugs, let me show you another bug, by the way. Just have to wait for the lagginess to disappear. There's something called energy consumption here. If you look at it, the, there is like a circle here that shows you uh, all, since since uh, start or since last charge, uh, how many kilowatt hour did you spend total, and then how many kilowatt hour of that was spent on propulsion or on uh, on air conditioning. But it's buggy. Now I can't show you, but it misreports. It claims that I spend. 100% on HVAC and then no energy on propulsion, you know, when I was driving. So again, plenty, plenty of bugs. And then when I talk about interior, by the way, uh, here, hard plastic, hard plastic, some kind of hard plastic. This one is soft, that's good. Uh, Semi hard plastic. Uh, the, the interior feel and quality it kind of screams like it's it's a cheap car. Uh, it seems like they have to save a lot of money on uh, on many parts here. And it's also missing, for example, here. There is no makeup light there. There is no makeup light on the, that side also. Uh, and also interior light. We only have interior light in the front here. The back has no interior light. The back has uh, just one USB A. It has no HVAC. Uh, in the back, not none under the front seats, none in the middle console. So actually, uh, for for the rear passenger, they they are either, I mean, if they if they want to be nice and cool in the back, it's freezing cold in here. And in, I guess in summer, or I mean in, in winter in Norway, if the rear passengers have okay heat, then it's a freaking sauna in the front here. So what else is wrong with this car? Um, Space-wise, it's actually okay since this is a relatively small car. So they managed to at least make uh, the car very spacious. Now we are going to a place. Uh, there is a there is a police checkpoint. So first, I thought that they were looking for illegal immigrants, but that, it's actually not that. They're mainly looking for um, drugs. Yeah, people trying to to smuggle drugs into Thailand, and there will be plenty, plenty of these police checkpoints. And now, yeah, I don't know. They they tend to pull over people. I, I'm never pull over. Uh, they they just immediately notice that there's something suspicious. Now, now I'm a little bit hot, so I'm going to increase the HVAC or yeah, lower the temperature a little bit. Let me see, is the auto system working? Yeah, it's, it's working. Um, but okay, but this car at least is a pure EV pl platform. So you have relatively large opening here. We have a wireless charging pad here that could take big phones, and uh, the the cabin is not as cramped as you will expect in maybe other similar small cars. So they managed to make, despite the car being uh, so small, I think it was four point, uh, less than 4.3 meters long, they managed to open up the space in the front here. So uh, you have cup holders here, you have actually space for putting, uh, I don't know, phone or snack or something here. In the center console, you also have plenty of space. So at least that's good. And then I don't know if you heard, but the, the door closing sound, uh, sounds quite premium compared to uh, similar price car like um, like or a good cat that they sell in in Thailand that one sounds very cheap when you close the door here you have this deep dunk dunk in the front and in the back also and also from outside when you close the door you also have this this deep bass and this deep dunk sound and that also by the way I'm not sure if it has anything to do with it but um, uh, the uh, the soundproofing here is relatively good. I haven't measured it because I, 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 tr I think I will try to measure it in my regular uh, uh, stretch in Norway instead. But uh, my impression is that the soundproofing here is also quite good. But is that enough though? You know, good, um, uh, okay interior, kind of shitty, well, uh, shitty materials. 
cheap everywhere. I feel like the ZS or many other cars like Auto 3 has way better and more premium interior. You have more functional, you have light in the back, you have events in the back in the Auto 3 here. It's quite stripped down everything. Like there's not even a center headrest in the back there. And also no, oh, no uh, middle armrest in the back you can fold down and obviously no uh, ski opening. Okay, over here now I have to open the window. Maybe they want to see in the back also. Uh, okay, they ask uh, where you're from. Uh, I said Chengdao, and then yeah, and then they want to see someone in the back. But well, actually, I kind of need to overtake that motorcycle because yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how to do it. In general, in Thailand, uh, uh, cars they drive faster than uh, scooters and motorcycles. But okay, so what what is the point of this car then? Because it seems to be quite crappy, right? Well, that was also my impression when I saw the MG4 at uh, at um, uh, the one motor show in Oslo. I was like, huh? Uh, it seems cramped. It seems cheap. Well, it was kind of crappy until I start driving the car because this car holy macaroni when you drive it it has this 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 ride this comfortable ride the suspension seems to be tuned against uh, like or it seems to be tuned similar to a German car so I don't know if you can hear or feel it that when we go over bumps there is no harshness over the bumps but there is like this perfect balance between stiffness and and comfort. Yeah, you know the road here is actually quite quite crappy and bumpy. Also, you can see the scooter bouncing in the front there. You see, I'm just going to overtake a couple of uh, motorcycles. We have to wait until uh, it's clear. All right, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. It's kind of it's not ideal to drive today, by the way, uh, now because it's kind of it's kind of busy. Well, okay, but man, this car, it rides so well. Like the, the, and also the steering wheel is thick and, and it has this nice padding. So it, it's, it's kind of soft-ish, just perfect. And you see it has this sporty shape also, but uh, in the set S, it feels a bit hard and kind of screams cheap, but at least what MG did was that they, they made the suspension really, really good. They made the ride good. The wheelbase is 2.7 meters, which is actually slightly more than, uh, for example, uh, uh, Volvo XC40. And they gave it 170 horsepower, 250 newton meter torque, and they gave it good seats. So what actually matters when you drive this car is where you touch the car, which is the steering wheel, pedals, the seat, and you feel the car when you drive it. Uh, man, it, it, it is so much fun to drive. I just have to wait a little bit now until I can clear the traffic here. Uh, I wish I could show you guys. I was supposed to hammer around the corners, but I just can't do it right now. I'm not sure if I can do it. We're gonna try now, get past these car cars, but you have to expect that I will hug the right. Okay, actually, yeah, 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 exactly. This is exactly what I mean. So I already told my mom that, well, um, I kind of need to drive a little bit fast, so you just have to hang in there. I was have to tell you guys, this car rides like a sports car it, 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 I I'm just super impressed of how well it rides like I almost feel like I'm driving a BMW i4 kind of you know I've driven many many German cars and man the ride the comfort the sound the, the like the deep sound I don't know if you heard you know the deep sound that the suspension makes when it when it goes over bumps that is very pleasant to listen to versus more like higher frequency sounds like that, that's you kind of get annoyed by that and you feel like that's some kind of cheap car but here it it feels like you're driving a german car like it seems like the chinese people they made a, an awesome job finally copying the germans when it comes to the ride so actually when i started driving this car i totally forgot about 
how crappy the interior looks like that it doesn't have rare uh, lights in the back or or air vents it doesn't matter if you drive alone or if you don't have kids then no problem you just enjoy the ride and enjoy the comfort and hammer it <laughs> to be see we try to soon enough we'll get to uh two lanes in each direction and we can go a little bit faster try to get past these guys but man when it comes to consumption by the way um, the drag coefficient and this one is either 2.27 or 0.287 so that's actually well I was about to say high but um, when I look at Kona Kona has 0.29 so I guess it's not it's not that high I, I guess more than 0.3 would be high but then uh, Tesla is 0.25 and then Tesla Model 3 is 0.23 yeah, yeah, now we come to this. This is the fun part, man. Oh, it, it goes like a, well, I wouldn't say it goes like a rocket, but it's fairly light, 1. Uh, 750 kilograms. And it just feels nimble. And there's almost no body roll when you go in the curves. And it just goes smoothly. And it doesn't have the weird bounce, like the, I would say the cheap bounce that many Chinese cars have. You can kind of feel like, okay, suspension is not that great. I'm actually going to drive here. This lane is quite shitty. It just flows over the bumps. It's super impressive. You know, why didn't MG lend me this car earlier? I could have told people how awesome the ride is. I get the car really late. Actually, I never, I haven't even received the car in Norway yet. I had to borrow it in Thailand. Man, so many, many people are, of course, considering buying this car. And I can tell you that this is a really awesome car, okay? Just forget about the, the negative stuff turn off those uh, automated uh, auto steer whatever and then just enjoy the drive then that that's the best part of course if you're looking for a car with good auto steer autopilot then you have to maybe go for some of the german cars or like like id3 uh, or or tesla then you get uh, way better uh, automated systems but for this price uh then it's quite good and also by the way when it comes to space uh compared to or good cut which is also very similar in size roughly 4.3 meters the aura good cut has way way less space for cargo than uh, the mg4 so i don't know how they did it but uh, they actually managed to make the mg4 overall quite good so it has some uh, improvement potential in the software yes but at least what is important is that the car is good and then they can slowly also improve the software so yeah i think that's going to be it for now I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later and now i'm gonna shoot the same video ish in thai <laughs> oh all right let me let me pull over here i still have a little bit of twisty part okay there <laughs>